Hey bosses, it's Marie from Asian Boss. When you date someone, what's the most important thing you look for in a person? Maybe it's their character or their sense of humor. But what about their social status? You may know about India's caste system, which is an ancient social hierarchy that dates back 3,000 years. And while caste-based discrimination was outlawed in 1950, it still exists in many aspects of Indian society. For example, marrying outside of one's caste still remains a topic of debate. So how do Indians feel about inter-caste marriage today? Our Asian Boss reporter hit the streets of Delhi to find out. Today we are curious to find out that what do Indians think about inter-caste marriages. So for our global viewers, could you please explain what Indian caste system is? So you have Brahmin, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Shudras and Panchamas. Panchamas were also known as Dalits in today's language. And then each of these has a series of subgroups which are again high in, a, in a hierarchical order. See, traditionally when the caste systems came out through our Vedas, they were based on professions. So Brahmins were the teacher class, Kshatriyas were the warrior class. And now what you see is an entirely man-made system where if you are born in a so-and-so caste, that is what you have to follow for the rest of your life. So what do you think, how big of a role does someone's caste play in Indian marriage or dating culture? Uh, so uh, although uh, in 21st century, the role of caste in marriage has been reduced but I would not say that it has been reduced substantially uh, today also uh, there are many people who they inquire that what caste the groom or what caste the bride is before getting married or before getting into a relation okay this plays a major role in terms of marriage because I'll tell you you know we are millennials and we are almost on that age of getting married people are not giving a damn about the person and the relationship and how to build that rather just like you fall under the same caste you fall under the same uh, financial bracket let's go for it so the thing is your caste is associated with your economic status is associated with which languages you speak it's associated with where you grew up what kind of pop culture you are exposed to what kind of references you understand, the, the circles that you move in, socially speaking, the school you went to. Um, so yeah, it has a huge effect on who you date because it has a huge effect on who you're exposed to at all to begin with, so who you're friends with, who you work with. I think that a lot of people who don't actively consciously think that they only want to date within a particular caste still end up dating within a particular caste. And it's not entirely a coincidence, it's systemic. Why is it so important in Indian society to stay within the same caste? Could you explain the cultural background? So only a few castes, only the ritually upper ones traditionally are landowners, for example. Um, they're the ones who traditionally have higher paying jobs and things like that. When you have intercaste marriage, there's more distribution of those resources, which a lot of people are against. Um, it also has to do with an idea of ritual purity, which again, um, some castes are considered to be more pure than others and intercaste dating and marriages and contact is supposed to pollute or cause them to be impure. That's the belief. Um, yeah, so that's why it's important to a lot of people. Let's say you go on a date with someone. Is that pretty much one of the first things you'd want to find out on a first date? That should not be the criteria first. I mean, there could be some reasons like where where you are want to, you know, respect your parents about it. If you're an Indian, if you're an Indian and you're in the, you know, uh, 20s to 30s where you're going to get married anytime soon, probably more than asking whether you're like, uh, I like you or I like her or li I like this, you'll probably ask, are you from the same caste? Or like, I mean, it will, you will be, you will be slippered if you go ask a girl, are you from the same caste? But end of the day, I think it becomes a valid question. And if you actually see dating apps in India, the joke is they have a caste thing that comes in. I don't even understand why do they put that in that. So can you just simply ask directly about someone's caste or is that considered rude? It is rude. It is very rude. But end of the day, it's an, uh, you know, like an unavoidable necessity for us, maybe. I don't know, but it has been forced upon us, so that's what I feel. Yeah, when my mom asked me, okay, who is this girl and where, uh, yeah, her probably second or third question will be what's her caste. Uh, but I personally would never care even 0.1% about what caste she belongs to. Apparently, inter-caste marriages were legalized in India in 1954, but uh, till now, the number is only 5% that Indians have involved in inter-caste marriage. So why do you think the number is so low till date? So constitution allowed it, but uh, society is still taking time to ch change. So yeah, I mean that's natural, but it will happen. So Parents, interference and possessiveness is still there. 
I think as a youngster, you people can uh, feel that. Because still in India, the parents are very possessive about their uh, children. Maybe they are 21, 22, 25, but they feel they, as we are telling they should do. I think that is a... Uh, and again, the caste is always there. Because uh, in India, it is deep-rooted. If I get uh, married to another caste, then my family won't be allowed to go to their gatherings. They won't invite my family to their function. So, like, especially in Tier 2, Tier 3 cities, it's very important, like, social, uh, to going into these social gatherings, to have a social name, to have a social influence. But if you, if their kids getting married to, uh, to a different caste, then all those influence, all those uh, respect just got bullied in a second. So, the first thing is that 70% of the population of India resides in rural belts. The 30% population which resides in urban belts, a majority of them reside in Tier 2, Tier 3, Tier 4 cities. So, caste is still a big thing in uh, rural settlements as well as in Tier 2, Tier 3 or Tier 4 cities for that matter. Those who have been the urban elites, for them the caste has disappeared over the period of time due to the uh, factors like globalization and proper education. But still, uh, the education has not, the liberal education has not percolated the roots of India. That's why caste system still exists. What are the, some of the challenges that couples face when they choose to marry someone from a different caste in India? Uh, if they live in villages or if they live in tier two, tier three cities, the first challenge is social exclusion. People will see them with as if they have committed some crime and all. Would you be personally be open to dating or marrying someone from a different caste? Yeah, quite okay. Like if I'm comfortable with someone spending uh, quality time, then the caste, the other factors come secondly to me. Firstly, if I'm comfortable, then it doesn't matter to me like which caste he belongs to. How do you think your parents would react to it if you m marry someone outside your caste? I will pass the question. The caste is not important, right? If, if two people have been staying together, they have been knowing each other better, and then it's better to actually get down to the families. The families can meet each other, and then let the family decide upon it, or the parents decide upon it, that the, uh, the family will be better for the guys or not. So, like, you are totally open for inter-caste marriage? Yeah, if you talk about it, I've been open with that. Definitely, I'll be very open to marrying to a different caste. How do you think, how would your parents react to... Y to, uh, if they come to know that you want to marry someone outside your caste? I think first they will be very angry, <laughs> but I am their son, so later they will accept. Do you know someone who has married an inter-caste or dated? Um, good question. Okay, no. <laughs> uh, not a lot of my friends have married yet. Um, just four or five and uh, none of them, I think. I have a lot of friends all around me who are... Uh, like, how did the people react to that? Nothing. Nobody cares. Because I am a very global person. I have, I have lived in the cities abroad. And that is something nobody even talk about it. Uh, I have done inter-caste marriage. Uh, I am Buddhist by uh, religion and my wife is Hindu. So how did your parents react to it when you told them like you wanted to do inter-caste marriage? They were quite supportive. So... That's why we, where we are after 20 years. I have an inter-caste marriage. I see that it took my family to adjust. For Indians, we know that society is the most important. So when we say that, okay, when you'll have an inter-caste marriage, I think, log kya kahenge? what will people say? So I think that was the most uh, biggest challenge that I faced. Uh, but then when my family took, uh, thought about my happiness, they, they understood, you know, how I want my partner to be. I think they adjusted to the fact. And when they saw that even after marriage, I'm happy, they were quite relaxed. My my parents, 50 years back, they got married. I mean, they were inter-caste. My mom was a Maristin superior Brahmin. My father was Shivasto, and I'm proud that at that time they did so. So my upbringing is like that. So my children, they are already married. And I never asked till date that the girl is of which caste doesn't make any difference. We all are human beings. So did your parents face any difficulties while they were having uh, an inter-caste marriage? Yes, yes. This is a very good question. I mean, last 40 years and 50 years when my parents got married, you can understand. When today, in our country, honor killing is there. So you can understand 50 years back when my father and mother, my mother was superior Brahmin. And uh, my grandfather, 
he was just searching for my father with a gun this was the condition and it was very difficult for her to adjust because in the family the relatives they always keep judging you if you do any small mistake oh no because she is from other caste so this was a very, very lot of struggle they did we heard that honor killings for inter caste marriages are regularly reported in india what's one of the most recent cases you have heard about um i can't recall any specific recent case uh, that i've heard about but you do hear about um honor killings fairly often i think i hear about one at least every like month or so uh i think we we uh, keep on hearing these cases on a daily basis but i think that's more on the country side maybe uh where uh, the acceptability is very very low the numbers are not that much if you talk about there are so many families and there are so many of the relationships which have been there where people actually get down together right and stay together also because numbers have been very less because whatever you're seeing on the media right that that's been getting highlighted right how do you think how does local media end up portraying intercaste marriages or media media messes up everything media is the only problem they just blow up random things if they see any killing they make it honor killing so end of the day i think media is the whole bigger problem like most of us think that media is like you know we are just sheep is just following what media says so uh, local media is very aggressive about this topic they want <laughs> the india to be puritanized so they are they don't have any positive attitude towards this this issue the cinema and the movies they make a great impact actually uh, to people who are not aware i think slowly and gradually these uh, the cinemas are bringing these topics uh, now to the audiences that there should be acceptability of all these scenarios and there are a lot of movies like that right like there's a lot of movies about talking about different uh, you know cultures about different intercaste so and i think the audience have well accepted that so when they can accept the movies why not in real life so i think people are changing the mindset is changing do you think intercaste marriages will ever be normalized in india or is it too deeply ingrained into the indian culture i think it will take 50 more years never never ever because we have so much of diversity in our culture in our uh, religion in our caste if you go to different states then every state have their own culture every diversity so it's not going to be not going to be easy to uh, like overcome those diversity in their cultures and all so that's what they done it's never going to happen definitely you know uh, with time people will uh, will be open to the fact that yes intercaste marriages can happen and they can be successful so i think india yes will have uh, its own will take time but then definitely they'll adjust to this it will for sure it will happen in future people are f- finally coming out of the mindset of okay till now it is al- always about surviving that you know uh, that first we need to survive we need to make money because too much population too less resources but as economy is growing money is flowing into the country people are getting richer and uh, information to access is coming better so now people have time to think okay what is wrong what is right the generation is also evolving generation is already smarter every generation is smarter than the previous one more open the, all of these factors are contributing to uh, finally uh, removing these social stigmas in the back Thank <laughs> you.